In this video, we are going to discuss the cylinder heat conduction. So, we have generalized equation is given in this form that we are discussing the first video. We have R to 1 by R to the power n del del R, R to the power n del T by del R plus Q triple dash by K equal to 1 by alpha dt by dt. It is known that for slab n value equal to 0 and you have to replace R by x. In case of cylinder n equal to 1 and for sphere you have to write n equal to 2. And Fourier law as we know along the x direction is given by minus qx equal to minus a into k into dt by dx. And what we have slab we have conduction resistance is r equals to l by a k. And the unit of resistance is degree Celsius per watt. For convection we have proved this value r equal to 1 by a h. Now this time our objective is to find out for cylinder. So first of all we will discuss how many types of heat transfer is possible in the case of cylinder. So we have conduction heat transfer through cylinder. In case of slab we have only pure axial heat transfer. Whereas in the case of cylinder we have axial and the radial heat transfer both direction. It can transfer along the longitudinal axis as well as along the radial. So whenever you have to calculate heat transfer through the cylinder be careful whether he is interested in the axial or he is interested in the radial. Suppose we are given here one circular disc. A disc means a flat plate and when we say flat plate it is a radial heat transfer. No, it is only axial heat transfer. And when we have a thin cylinder like this whose cross section area is very very small as compared to radial area. In this case the first figure the radial area is small as compared to the cross section area. So that is a model is what only axial heat transfer is possible. So this radial area will model as a negligible area. So only heat transfer is perpendicular to the cross section that is along the longitudinal axis and this figure in, in our regular way is simply this figure. Only thing that in this figure we are not showing what is exactly the cross section is. So cross section in this one that is the area perpendicular to heat transfer is the circular section. So you can very well solve this problem by slab equation. That is Q equal to A into K into T1 minus T2 divided by L. L is thickness. So this type of problem are basically you have to solve when you are given the disc and we are given the temperature on the two circular cross section. Remember that you have to take area in this problem as pi by 4 D square. For this model radial heat transfer is 0. Now let us consider a case of hollow cylinder. That is we have inside wall and we have outside wall. So this one is inner cylinder. So right now we are solving the problem for hollow cylinder not for solid cylinder. And you have to assume here that entire cylindrical surface is maintained at uniform temperature. And the outside circumferential surface is maintained at some other temperature T2. In the last case our radial area was 0. For the present figure our radial area is very very large. And we have a negligible cross section area. So maximum heat will transfer along the radial direction as compared to axial direction. So this is the case of pure radial heat transfer. Let's say we have hot surface inside, cold surface outside. So let's say R1 is the inner radius, R2 is the outer radius and we have a material here in between R1 and R2. Let the material as the thermal conductivity equal to K. Let R1 is the inner radius, R2 is the outer radius and let's say the capital L this time is called as length not thickness. And this material is offering the resistance to the heat transfer. Remember it is a one surface only. It is not two surface. And for our model we are considering the length is very very greater than the diameter. It means that negligible heat is transferred along the axial direction. And we again back to the one dimensional heat transfer. When we are in the disc our model was length is very very small as compared to diameter. That is why we have considered only the heat is transferred from circular section. So in this case heat is transferred from high temperature to low temperature along this direction. This direction is nothing but a radial direction that you can visualize in this view. So it is radially outward because inside is at high temperature and outside is at low temperature. So this type of heat transfer is called as radial. So in case of cylinder we have both possibility that is axial as well as radial. Check the data given. If the data is data for temperature is given for inside outside, 
then it's a radial heat transfer and if data is given on the circular cross section that is on face it will be the axial heat transfer for radial heat transfer q actually is zero and for axial heat transfer q radial is zero at any time we are calculating one dimensional only